Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. We'll now move to Mr. Harvey, please, for five minutes. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Um, I want to follow up on my colleagues' comments. And the reason I would like to do this is because the 10 grams a day, so I, I have a good friend that has a musk, he's a paraplegic, and uh, he takes medical marijuana for that exact use. And in New Brunswick, until recently, the, the musculoskeletal rate was 1.5 to 2.5 grams per day. And it was increased in the last year to three grams per day uh, which is actually at the high end for the average. The actual identified, if you go to the Health Canada website and you look at the, the, admin, the, the recommendations on there, it says, the average for smoking and vaporizing, the median reported dosage is 1.5 to 2 grams per day, respectively. For edibles, the median dosage is 1.5 grams per day. For teas, it was also 1.5 grams per day. So what you're saying is, is that and I mean, they're your, they're your, it's your department. And basically what it identifies is, is that Veterans Affairs has identified that the need of somebody uh, that's a veteran is more than four times the amount of the average Canadian. And no, I'm not done yet, but when I'm done, you're more than welcome to speak, okay? Uh, my, my reasoning behind this is, is that, and I, I also know that the, the average cost uh, for medical marijuana is at the low end six dollars on the average and at the high end ten dollars so if you go with an average of eight dollars i do understand that there are strains that are upwards of twenty dollars but that's on the very very high end and it's for very concentrated product so if you have a veteran that's using 10 grams per day which is more than four times the amount of the average user at the high end of the dosage uh, to me something in that just does not compute and also if you look at it, so if you, if you figure it out on an average daily usage, the average daily in the, in the medical marijuana um, uh, study that was done of, of current users uh, for medical usage across the country uh, was identified at around uh, 90 grams per month total usage. So according to 10 grams per day of usage, that's over 300 grams a month at an average cost of uh, $10 a gram, that's $30,000 a year. Uh, I, I question um, whether all of that usage is being actually done by that veteran. Maybe that's not a conversation that anybody wants to have, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lobbing out the question here because uh, it's right there. And I also, my other second question, I guess, on the end of that is, what is the specific budgeted amount for medical marijuana uh, forecasted for 2016, 2017, and 2017, 2018. And I, I do believe that those numbers should be available somewhere because in the Veterans Affairs Canada 2016, 2017 report on plans and priorities, the budgetary numbers are there. So obviously there is a budgeted number. Uh, Minister and yeah, Sorry, just to say that your, your concerns are well-founded. And uh, it's because of all of that that you've just laid out <clears throat> is precisely why the minister has launched this review. You're exactly spot on with, uh, with your points. Uh, and, but that's why the minister wanted to make sure that we, we actually get the best evidence we can from across um, uh, all of the realms, that is from the medical experts, from the, from the producers, and, and going into the price points and the strains that you've mentioned, uh, as well as the beneficiaries. And again, not obviously meeting with all the beneficiaries, but with a select group to understand the various perspectives uh, as we try to figure out how to move beyond this guideline that was put in place in, in 2014 uh, and how do you normalize this to ensure that there is not a, uh, a uh, unintended consequence of making the health worse for the veteran and indeed supporting the physicians for the well-being of those veterans. So this is precisely why we're working on this. We're, we've been working, uh, uh, and we've just had a, a summit of, uh, as I mentioned before, of all the veteran associations here in Ottawa recently to educate the community in terms of the kinds of points that you've just mentioned. Can I just ask um, Michelle and, and, and uh, Dr. Korshan if they could wait in? Uh, I don't have the number on me with, reg with regard to 16 or 17, 18. Over to you. 
is pretty well up. I'll give you an extra time, but okay. uh, for, for the numbers, I, I, if, if, it, uh, please, if it's okay with the chair, I'll provide the exact numbers. I have the numbers for our entire uh, medication, but I don't have it with me for m marijuana specific, so I can provide that to the committee uh, after this if it's okay, because uh, I have the general number but not specific. Um, as the deputy said, this is exactly why we're, we're following up on the policy. Uh, we did put into place 10 grams uh, at that moment uh, because once Health Canada changed, we were sort of caught and we, we, we did cap uh, and with the intention and we had started looking at what is the optimal amount, what is the right amount and that is the work we are doing in developing the policy, talking to the experts, talking to uh, other jurisdictions, following up on the points we raised, these are all, and we were aware of those, these are all stuff that we have followed up on. And, and even the producers, what is an average Canadian take versus a veteran? And they have different categories. I won't get into all of it, but who takes what? Some are that level, some are a little higher, some are actually lower, it depends on. And to come up to a reasonable policy that will meet the needs of our veterans, ensuring their health, uh, but also meet the needs, uh, make sure that we're not causing a downstream effect with, with the marijuana. Thank you. I don't know, Dr. Cushane, did you have uh well uh, comment on that. With respect to the amount, we, we can't assume that they're smoking the entire 10 gram every day. And when we talk to the veterans, some put it in their smoothies, some make brownies with it, some extract oil, which requires higher quantities. So they, they don't, uh, you know, we can't assume uh, that all of our clients are at the high end of the, uh, of the 10 gram. Mr. Harvey's going to burst if I don't let yeah. him back in. Here. The only reason I want to make it is because it's right on the Health Canada website. Yeah, I've got it right here. That. They, that's that what they went, report. Right. What they report they're is. They're not recommending. They're no, reporting No, but what they're reporting that, is, yeah. is what their findings have been yes. based on the evidence, not only from here, but from a study that was, that was uh, based out of the Netherlands, that actually when marijuana is consumed in alternate forms besides inhalation, the actual amount that's consumed on a daily basis goes down. So to say that, to say that that is a plausible reason as to why uh, consumption levels could be so high is categorically false. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Uh, maybe we'll have a chance to come back to you. On this, we'll go to Monsieur Godin.